Alright, welcome back to House Party 5v5. We're gonna be starting it off with the second in-house game of the night. These are shoutcasting games that you can play in. I am Enix Blaze, your color caster for tonight. And I'll be handling the play-by-play. -play. I go by the name Captain Flowers and Enix. Game number two, starting off similar to game number one, a Fiora ban. Nobody likes dealing with her these days. Oh, definitely not. Just too strong in all phases of the game. Early game and team fights late game. Has the ability to play pretty much in any lane. I haven't really seen Fiora bot yet, but I'm sure it could work. I've seen Yasuo bot work, so if that can work, I'm sure the dashy Fiora as well can work as well. Yeah. It looks like Swain being banned out. That's gotta be a target ban. Swain, a champion that a lot of times people forget even exists in this game. But apparently somebody on this red team has a couple games under his belt and it's something the blue team does not want to have to deal with. And we're gonna see a Rengar ban as well. They don't want to see anybody pick up that assassin. I think that Rengar ban may be for the Merrick Korean. I'm not entirely sure. Actually, Zark is a jungler. I forgot Zark was in this game. Gangplank gonna be banned out though for blue team. Every time I see a Rengar ban, I always assume that the person banning him is an AD carry main. That champion, just the nightmare for AD carry. So hard to actually do anything you want to do in the game with him hopping around and insta-giving you out of nowhere. But the Gangplank, a much more standard ban, one that people just don't like dealing with. The barrels, although they're nerfed, still capable of dealing so much damage if they find their target. Yeah, definitely. They're going to ban Blitzcrank out as well. Very, very strong pick in these in-houses can set up picks all day and even seeing more of a ranked style team play Blitzcrank is still somebody that is very hard to play against even in these in-houses Nidalee going to be banned out as well a flashback to previous seasons where Nidalee was the oppressive power pick she's the Fiora of ages past nobody wanted to deal with that it was just complete garbage to have to go against. Felt like there was nothing you could do. People not wanting to play against it now, it seems. I don't know whether that's a targeted ban or whether it's just negative emotions still festering after the Age of Nidalee. No, it's definitely towards Zark. They don't want that early game. Although I don't like playing against Nidalee, even in the current meta. She's like Lee Sin, but oh, looks like no pick gonna come. Oh, the rise right at the last second. They're gonna be... It's mind games, man. Mind games, yeah. Holding that pick until the end. I didn't think it was gonna go through, but looks like the client may be trolling us a little bit. Mordekaiser, though, not banned on either side. Mordekaiser, Darius, and Garen are all open. These champions that have been banned in solo queue constantly, Darius's daily ban rate within the past few days has been over 90% across all ELOs. Mordekaiser sits around a 75, Garen sits around a 75, Fiora sits around a 75. The only one of that handful of champions that's banned is Fiora, and I'm going to be really surprised if we don't see a Darius this game, especially with Ryze already locked in. Darius can beat him up after he's got a couple levels in that top lane. Mm, we're going to see here, it looks like a pick-heavy composition. Going to try, Mordekaiser very strong with these pick style champions because he has no mobility needs someone else to bring the other champions in which is interesting because they did ban blitzcrank out on the red side but thresh still very capable of bring bringing that utility in and it looks like we've got technical issues once again looks like we're gonna have to start this over maybe hmm We'll have to see here in just a moment. And I take a quick break and see what might have happened during Champ Select. Alright, looks like just a client error or a disconnect from Zark because he is straight back into the game. Nobody rage quitting this time. We'll see who decides to go I'm gonna be banning out the same champions here should go out with the same picks until they get down to the end 
I'm really interested to see what they pick along with this Rise onto the blue side. Rise is a champion who he's in a similar boat to what I talked about last game with the Master Yi and the and the uh, Akali going into the solo lanes. In that, if he falls behind, he's just he doesn't do anything. Rise behind without the items, without the levels to stay even with his opponents. He just sort of he's there, but he's not a problem. On the other side of that coin, if he's ahead, if he's dominating, if he's 5-0 and zero in his lane, he's a monster that it's almost impossible to answer. Oh, I bet you it was the delay. Somebody's client, I think, froze. And they ended up picking Rise instead of the pick that they wanted. So ending up going with the same picks except for switching out that first one. So they're just going to start the draft over for both teams. Looks like they're going to pick up Callista, the kite heavy champion. Actually, he's someone that's pretty pretty good against Morakaiser early in the game. I'm very questionable about the Leona pickup. Mordekaiser's a champion who loves to just get up close with the enemy. He loves to have those early scraps. That's why you always pick him with an all-in champion like Blitzcranker, Thresher, Leona, because he doesn't work that well in a poke lane or in something similar. He wants to go for the all-in, and Leona's looking for the all-in against him. So Callista and Leona are very confident that they can win this 2v2 all-in against Mordekaiser and Thresh. And it's something that I'm excited to see if it works out, but at the same time, I'm a little skeptical. Hmm. That top lane pick. Not sure. It's pretty decent into Darius. We'll have to see. A lot of these picks, still hard to tell on who's strong against who, against these new Juggernauts as they've only been out for a patch or two now as with their reworks. I have to agree with you though, with Leona. Callista's very good with a ranged champion because you can proc that passive and do a oh, lot absolutely. of early game damage with a ranged champion. And somebody like Leona, you can't really bully out as much. And into that Mordekaiser, it, I just don't like that pick either. I'm also not digging the early or middle level Vladimir pick. I don't like picking Vladimir up early in the draft for the same reason that I don't like doing it with Yasuo. Because Vladimir has some lanes that go really well for him, and there's other lanes. Like if you, Vlad has to go against a melee carry assassin type thing, if he has to deal with like a Wukong or a Trindamir or a Talon or anything like that, it's so rough for him early on in the game. It's questionable to pick it up when they can still counter pick it, but it is going to be what they choose. They lock in the Yasuo, Jarvan being hovered, and I really like that. I love to see Jarvan, I love to see Vi, I love to see Wukong, I love to see all those picks with Yasuo because they make setting up that last breath so easy. Yeah, definitely going to go for that. Also, works really well with Leona in the team fight phase. Maybe that's what they're going for, is that late game team fighting. They have a lot of AoE, especially if Callista decides to go for an earlier pick on her, uh, instead of going for Blade, going for Renan's, be able to put out a lot of damage in the mid game. I don't know about Varus either though. They can, Jarvan can get right into the back line there and knock up both of those, uh, both of those carries there. Is that Twitch jungle? I believe it's going to be Diana jungle with the mid lane Varus being hovered, but it looks like if they lock in the Darius, then it is going to be Twitch jungle, because that would put Diana mid lane. It's going to be interesting to see what Hater picks here, because that's going to tell us a lot about everything else. I haven't seen a Twitch jungle in ages, Enix. I haven't seen it either, but Mike, <laughs> the person I was talking about last game picking up the weird supports, Mike loves to play all of these really strange off meta supports. First time I saw the jungle, Kench, it was with Mike. And then we also saw, I believe it was a Blitzcrank jungle on the opposite team in the same game. <laughs> and that's, that's the dream. Oh seeing yeah. Those crazy picks. I love to see off meta. Because off meta really, there's people who follow the meta and there's people who set the meta. And the only way to set the meta is to go outside of it to begin with. One day jungle Blitzcrank is going to set the standard for League of Legends. And Mike's just going to look back and say, I told you so. Mm, we'll see. It looks like Ignite for Darius. Gonna try and go for that early aggression in the ballsy raccoon there. Ice Storm trying to keep Vladimir down in that top lane. 
I'm very, very much not a fan of Ignite on Darius, simply because the champion's an eight weakness, like we talked about last game, is you gank him. You apply pressure to him early, don't let him snowball in that 1v1 scenario where he just heals all day and you can't deal with him, you gank him. And the worst thing that you can do when you're a champion who already has a big kick me sign on his back because you have no mobility, is to take Ignite because you're just doubling down on something that's already going to happen. Darius is going to win the 1v1 with Vladimir if he understands the champion and he understands the matchup. He doesn't need Ignite to win that matchup. At the same time, if Jarvan shows up, if Jarvan just decides to set up his tent and his camping supplies top lane and have a nice week-long vacation up there, Darius is going to struggle because the first time he dies, he won't be able to teleport back up top and not miss the minion wave or anything. He's going to miss a lot, and every subsequent gank is just going to do that more and more. The Ignite pick, I'm not a fan. Um, they do decide to go with Twitch. Looks like that is going to be Sir Longballs on Diana. I'm interested to see how Jarvan reacts to that pick in the jungle if he notices it during champ select. They're going to go for something like an early invade. I'm actually... I think everything I just said doesn't matter because the red team is not setting things up like I thought they were. It's actually a Twitch and Thresh bot lane. Mordekaiser looks to be going top with Darius mid being run as a counter pick to Yasuo. Ooh. Just noticed the summoner switch there. Gonna be interesting. It's definitely something that, it slipped my mind at the start, because, you know, I see Darius, I think, okay, top lane. I see Mordekaiser, I think, bot lane cheese. But then the Twitch pick at the end just completely threw a wrench in everything I thought was true. And now we're going to see these lanes all over the place. I actually do like Darius as a counter pick to Yasuo. Yasuo struggles with champions that his wind wall has no effect versus because so much of the champion relies around using the wind wall to outplay the important trading spells. You can't really wind wall an axe. So I want to see this Darius mid pick work out. Yeah, we'll definitely see it. Mordekaiser being picked in the top lane with the changes to the heal. It's gonna help him out. But we're going to take a quick break here as the game starts going. This is House Party 5v5, playing some in-house games. We'll be right back.
Alright, what a beautiful day on the rift as we make our way back into these in-house games. This is House Party 5v5. I'll be your <laughs> color ca caster for tonight. I am Enix Blaze. And I'll be doing play-by-play. -play. I go by the tag Captain Flowers. These teams moving as a group once again into the jungle, at least if you're on red team, looking to maybe go for an invade with that early thresh hook. To Summoner's Rift. Mm, pings coming out for both sides right now. Red team trying to make an invade. Will the blue team be able to spot this out? They have no wards out right now, so just trying to sneak in there. I wonder if they're going for maybe a... Oh, I thought they were going to go into lane, but looks like they're just fanning out a little bit. Going in. Do they see this? Thresh could potentially find the hook here. He grabs it on the Kalista. The death is there. The exhaust is down. The pull from Darius. And that's going to be first blood. And Ignite is dropped. Darius wanted to make sure they picked that one up. Thresh using both summoners as well. But they grab the kill. They get four assists on top of it. A little bit of a disadvantage there for Ice Storm. He did expend his 1v1 summoner and didn't get the kill credit himself. So Yasuo is going to have that to work with. But overall, great job for the red team here before the one and a half minute mark. Yeah, a little bit, maybe a little bit overzealous with that Ignite from Ice Storm, but definitely securing the kill. It actually goes over to Hater, that uh, passive tick of damage, a little bit too strong from Hater there. But that's going to be good for their bot lane, going to get slowly closer. It actually gives them a better advantage because Kalista was the one that got killed on that. Darius actually does have a little bit of extra EXP from that level 1 play happening in their favor. But at the same time, he took Apprehend at level 1. He has no ability to trade or clear these waves away. So Yasuo can just dash on top of these or use Steel Tempest and secure that's what he took at level 1. And just trade very effectively with Darius at level 1. Kill the minions quicker and still beat him to that level 2 experience point. Oh, and there goes the client again on my side. They try and reload this here. All right, I'll take over. In the meantime, try to keep the commentary flowing. Darius and Yasuo off to that early start. Like we said, Yasuo going to have the advantage, at least until Darius can hit two and grab that Decimate. Mordekaiser just pushing and healing in the top lane. This is a matchup that favors Mordekaiser, at least old Mordekaiser. I've never seen it since he got remade. But on old Mordekaiser, it definitely favored him early. But as the game went on, if Vlad could go aggressive on him before he found his way under the minions, it worked out in his favor. Twitch and Thresh going to be able to hit level 2 first here in the bot lane, but no aggression actually coming out with that power spike. Callista and Leona going to be able to find their own level oh. 2, and Leona wants to go in deep. It's the Rat potentially in a lot of trouble here. The Spears are coming out. She doesn't land the Pierce. Will the Ren be able to find some damage? One more Spear is going to do it, but Callista going to just pull those out right there. Twitch reduced to 100 HP, but it's not quite enough, but Blue Team knows they want to play aggro. I don't know what's going on here. A League of Legends being too strong with this client crashes. The second one in a row. Very close though, I saw there in the bot lane trying to trade back and forth between these two teams. Alright, here we go, loading back up into the game. Yasuo continuing to pressure Darius mid lane. A wonderful job dashing into him when the decimate happens. If you make sure you're on top of Yasuo during that, he's not able to actually get that spin. Leona taken very low into this bot lane, but Twitch and Thresh both 200 HP and nothing more to speak of. Kalista still near full as blue team is taking control across every lane except top. Darius is actually struggling in this mid lane to keep up his CS with what Yasuo is able to put out. That level one apprehend just not working out in the 1v1. Both teams going low on support. Leona having to pretty much eat all of those biscuits. Oh! They're going in. Leona with the all in, going into the damage onto the switch. Kalista could be able to find those rins, and that is going to be the kill for the blue team. The heal comes out to keep Leona alive. They want the kill onto Thresh. Why not make it a two for Kalista needs another spear? And she finds it. That's a double kill. On the blue team 80 carry. The Amera Korean dominating here in the bottom half of the map. That's a very strong early game. That is actually what the blue team was looking for. I was expecting, actually, because of the Mordekaiser pick, that blue team would actually be behind, but because of the Twitch pick, it actually became very strong into that matchup. I don't agree with Yasuo taking his wind wall this early against Darius. A lot of times, if Yasuo players are up against a full melee matchup like that, you'll save it to level 8, similar to a Singe not taking his puddle until that level. 
but blue team going for a very early dragon play before the five minute mark even breaks out this could be disastrous the dragon does so much damage early mordekaiser has found his way into the pit jarvin being forced to flag and drag just to get to safety and blue team has done everything except wrap the dragon up with a bow to give it over to their opponents and jarvin just gonna go ahead and throw himself in there as well red team just came back huge that was a really good rotation there from the red side even without the vision control, they knew where everybody was. And they were able to pick up that dragon plus a kill. Jarvan being a little bit too rambunctious there, trying to pick up the steel. Should have just gave it up. And that's an advantage compounded there for the red side. A very, very ambitious call being made by blue team. But those early dragon plays are something that you can't really do unless you're in a lane swap scenario where the enemy bot lane is top, or you're in the kind of situation where you just picked up a double kill bottom, they don't have the manpower nearby. It was ambitious, but it wasn't well thought out on the side of the blue team, and they paid for it. Yasuo continuing to pressure this mid lane. Oh, Vlad taking a lot of damage there. Ballsy Raccoon playing up a little bit too far into Penguins who chunks him down, gets actually three hits onto him. Vlad not really having a blink or a dash ability, and it leaves Penguins the ability to actually stick to him and apply all three stacks of his Q. We'll see if that will translate to a much larger advantage later into the game. This is not a good omen early on for Jarvan. He's a great champion for early ganks. The power of the flag and drag just gets him in there, drop the golden ega, slow him down, and the damage on his kit is so high for the base value that he's just a huge ganking threat, but he's 0-1-0. and zero. Meanwhile, Diana, who doesn't really turn on until level 6, is 0-0-2. Jarvan and Yasuo into the bot lane. The last breath is there. Thresh takes a lot of hurt. He's going to go down very, very quickly. That's a free pickup over to blue side. They may have given away the dragon, but they're coming back with a vengeance. That's exactly what I was about to say there. Jarvan going to be trying to farm up and maybe look for Yasuo to hit 6, trying to gate for Yasuo, but ends up going with him down in the bot lane and picking up a kill as well. But Penguin still More pressuring Kaiser. top. So much pressure into this top lane, just forcing Vlad away, able to poke so very effectively. Even though the ability did get kind of nerfed, Siphon of Destruction, still a potent tool for dealing with these ranged opponents. Darius working his way up top. They want to try to make a play onto the Reaper. They definitely do. Looks like Darius, though, very behind. Oh, Diana in an ad spot, though. Diana and Yasuo into the 1v1. Yasuo trying to use those minions to find the damage, but Diana at level 6 is nothing to scoff at. It's going to be the tornado comes out, but it does not connect. Zenith Blade won't be there either. Diana gets herself out of dodge with the use of her flash. Callista in the 1v2. The death sentence not going to be able to connect. A wonderful flash coming out from her, but the exhaust is down. She drops the pink ward to try to deal with Twitch, but it's not going to be enough to keep her alive. She picks up the kill into Thresh. Very well played. A 1 for 1 and a 1v2 is what you want to see. Americorean shows up, still dies, but he brings them with him. Yeah, we see this push now on the top and bot lane. Pressure on all sides of the map. Vlad having to back there is not gonna be good. He does pick up the gun blade, so he'll be able to sustain and farm up just a little bit better. But Darius though, still pretty far behind. He's almost, almost gonna be 30 CS behind, which is double for Yasuo. I don't think he's gonna be able to put this counter pick to its full potential at this point. Although he does have level six and he can gank. Darius is actually down almost a thousand gold on Yasuo just at the nine minute mark. Once Yasuo finds that static shift completed, Darius is going to be nowhere near his Black Cleaver. Black Cleaver is a more expensive item to begin with and when you're already a thousand gold behind, if Yasuo goes back as soon as he has the money for the item, he'll have Static Shiv when Darius has nothing more than Phage. Thresh into the mid lane, the Decimate is there. They are finding the damage for the time being, but they're going to be able to, to find the dunk if they want the kill. The Ignite is going to be there. The auto attack, Darius needs a dunk. He flashes to grab it. That's going to be four min mid for the red side. They pick up the enemy mid laner, and they're looking to take the tower off. This is so good for the red team. They get a kill onto Ice Storm. And they should pick up this tower as well. Dragon going to be spawning soon. They'll have a push on the mid lane. And this should get them quite the advantage. That'll be the second dragon if they can pressure this right. Mordekaiser just continuing 
this aggression topside. He's up 19 CS on his lane opponent. Vlad just wants to try to scale. He's so close to losing his turret, though. He's going to have to be careful to not give over too much extra global gold to this red side. They're already ruling this game in terms of objectives, and blue team has to find a way to answer it. The kills are even, but it's red team finding the objectives afterwards, and that's so important as you work your way towards the mid game. Oh, but looks like more damage on the Zark, the heal. Oh, here comes Bozzy Seagull. go very deep onto this one. The Solar Flare is there and only finds the slow, but Last Breath is gonna make that more than enough. Yasuo finds the damage. One more cut's gonna do it as Darius gets cut to pieces here in the mid lane. Another kill on the Yasuo, his second of the game, but Diana looking to clean this one up. The answer is, can she do it? The question, I should say, the answer is gonna be no with Jarvan nearby. They do not have the Yasuo ult to set up if the Flag and Drag connects but they're just going to be able to shove this creep wave up. So very important, it's going to set Darius that much further behind, as Yasuo now has enough gold to go ahead and go back for that static ship. Dragon is going to be up soon, though, and one thing to note is Yasuo will not have last breath for this dragon fight. And Darius coming back up, he will have Decimate available. We'll see, though, how Red Team decides to prep up for this fight. They do have Scuttle Crab control. Here comes the roam, but pings coming out from both sides of the map as Red Team makes the roam. Might getting stopped there. Yasuo gets away in time, but the thing is, he's now been forced back. The dragon is up, and Red Team could position for this aggressively. The Death Sun's connecting on towards Leona. It's going to be quick. He's got the poison. The lantern over the wall brings Darius into the picture, and that is going to be Hater picking up Ballsy Seagull, bringing him down. The fifth kill of the game going over onto this Red Team. Twitch is third of the game, and that's going to be another free dragon. Yasuo's decision to not go back immediately upon having enough gold for Static Shift, knowing that the dragon is going to spawn in 30 seconds. Could have been what potentially cost his team right here. As now their support is dead. Jarvis oh. over the wall looking to potentially steal this one away. He's not going to find it. And again, he just gets killed. The teleport from Vlad. He goes in 1v5. Why did he not cancel that TP? It's a double kill for Diana. The Hemo Plague not going to be fatal for anyone. Red team, another huge play in the Dragon Pit. Oh, Yasuo though. Oh, never mind there. I was looking for a play there on the Zark, but he gets away safely. That was a very, very questionable teleport there from Vlad. He had the push there on the top lane. There wasn't much that he could do. He should have just kept pushing that top lane, getting an advantage somewhere on the map, but decides to try and go in and decides to end his fate there. Oh, but Zark getting a pulled in. Yasuo being pulled into the fight. It's going to be Leona rotating to help him out once again. Three mid middle now for this blue side. They do find the knockup. They do find the last breath. It's going to be Ice Storm going down first. It looks like Mordecai could be in some trouble as well. They're going to be able to pick up Leona in return. But Penguin is going to be the double kill now for Yasuo. A one for two. Blue team will not give this game up. But now, can they take the objective? That's what they need to do. Diana trying to rotate to make it not the reality that they're looking for. But she can't do a whole lot with Vlad sitting there. This should definitely be a tower now for the blue team. Ballsy Raccoon has the ability to zone off long balls. This tower is definitely going to be in favor of the blue side. Going to even up the global pressure now. But what are they going to do? Looks like Yasuo should have enough gold to buy very soon. Finish his static shiv. That'll be a very good star spike for him. He's got 2,400 gold on his person. He hasn't shopped in a year now. And that's actually something that a lot of players kind of do unconsciously, is you just sort of pile up the gold. And if you see yourself sitting on a lot, it's kind of fun to think about it. Leona going in very deep on the Thresh. Callista showing up. They've got the Pierce. Can they find the Rin damage? The Eclipse is going to pop. Diana rotating over, looking to cancel this one out. The Death Sentence connect to Leona, but who cares when you've got a Callista ult? Drags to safety. Leona being thrown backwards to disengage this fight, but the Moonfall, they've got the damage, they've got the CC. A little bit more is going to bring Leona down, and Hader picks up his fourth kill of the game. Speaking of gold sitting, Diana sitting on over 3k right now. Using Diana's base scaling very, very well. Although, had she gone back, Maybe could have finished that fight out a little bit earlier and taking this tower a little bit quicker. Red team will pick up their second turret of the game. Gonna match those in quantity now with the dragons. Blue team has found their way onto the objective scoreboard, but it's still nowhere near what red team's able to find. They're definitely making the plays that turn in to bigger plays this game. Ooh, they're getting spot out by Ward. Darius trying to get some advantages there. For his side, picking up the crab, 
But nothing's gonna be spawning soon. I think they just want some sort of getaway for the bot lane because it's pushed so hard. He also are trying to make a move. Does he spot out penguins? I think he does. Penguins trying to get away, but it's gonna be Yasuo looking to potentially collapse here. Not gonna oh. get him in time. The TP takes him from the danger of that brush to the safety of that spawn fountain. And Mordekaiser, not possibly quite aware of how close to death he was, but the answer was very, very close. Ooh, I don't know about this teleport here. It's not gonna be up for this these next fights now. Vlad does have his teleport up here very shortly on the last quarter of the cooldown. So should be able to make some plays. Can push very well. We'll see what they decide to do next. That's one thing that teams in more unorganized matches like this one where you don't have a full pre-made team of five that's been playing together for a long time. Teleport advantage is something that often slips the minds of players and it's something that can really change the flow of a game. If one member can manage to teleport into the fight, make it a 5v4 and the other guy can't respond, Vlad will have that advantage here in about 30 seconds. And if blue team can manage to make something out of that, it's going to be very big for them. Four people pushing up this mid lane. But Penguin's pushing really strong here despite the teleport disadvantage. Sark though getting hit. Connects on to Yasuo. The wind wall is there to try to prevent the follow up. The decimate doesn't connect. Twitch eats a few spears for his trouble. But the blue team doesn't have disaster show up despite that death sentence landing onto their most fed person. Mordekaiser mm. trying to make a roam now. Here comes Hater though. He's going invis. Will they try to engage? Uh, I don't know. There comes Diana off the backside. That's going to be down a little bit. Looks like they're going to throw up a lantern. They really need to get a good engage here on either the American Korean or the Mary Korean or onto Zark. Oh, Death Sentence just barely missing. Zark definitely going to need to be the target if you're on red team this game. He's so strong right now. He's got the static ship, he's got the phage, and he's going to be a huge problem if he gets off a great ulti in one of these fights. At the same time, blue team has to be careful. They can't play super over aggressive. They're actually down 3,000 gold. If they try to take a fight too close to this red team turret, it could end disastrously. Ooh, Mike playing very far forward here. Is he gonna try? He hits Ballsy Seagull, but can't do anything with it. Somebody who you don't want to bring into your team. Nobody actually in position for a fight right now. Instead, they're more focused on getting in position for this dragon that's going to be spawning in 20 seconds. This is an important dragon for both teams in terms of fighting. This is an odd-numbered dragon, no matter which side you're on. The even-numbered dragons, less important for actual fights. They give you minion and tower damage, but they don't actually change the way a team fight works. This is going to be damage for blue team or movement speed for red team. Neither side is going to want to give this one up, as Blue Team has position on it during the spawn, and they're wanting to go full throttle right now. Red Team potentially looking to collapse. The shield is down for Mordekaiser. Darius in the middle of everyone. A pull onto three. The decimate onto three. The Morgana. Oh, not the Morgana. The Mordekaiser. Oh, people are melting on this red side. It's going to be Thresh first. Jarvan second. Darius goes down. Kalista kites Mordekaiser away. The ultimate has not killed her. A double kill on the Leona. Twitch cleans up the Yasuo. It's a three for three so far, but blue team health bars are in no position to endure anymore. A four for three. It's going to be the red side winning out in the team fight just slightly, but blue claims the dragon. That was a mistake there by red team. Although they did come ahead there at the end, they were out of position for that fight. I think no casualties could have gone down if they had control of that area. Diana deciding to farm instead of have a good position there. Blue team just cleared out all the wards, and luckily Darius got a pull on the multiple people, chunked everybody out, and was able to do quite a bit there in that fight. Looks like I got another bug splat here. Oh, this client. League client doing what it does, being from 2011 and having outdated tech all over the place. Riot, please. Those priorities are what we need to be concerned about right now. Unless you're Twitch, now you gotta be concerned about all that CC and damage coming your way from this blue side. Leona and Jarvan finding the lots and lots and lots of damage, but it is enough. The Ignite connects. Leona grabs the shutdown 
onto Hater. That's a very important kill to get to. Six and one, now six and two. He's out of the picture for 25 seconds, and with four members of this blue team mid, they could look to threaten this turret. Their AD carry is bottom, though, and they have to be careful to not get engaged on in a place where they can't do anything about it. It's going to be Yasuo finding the tornado onto two. It's going to be the pull. Comes out from Darius to teleport here from Red Team, and Blue bit off a little bit more than they can chew. Diana takes the first kill of the fight. It's Yasuo under pressure from Mordecai to the ultimate. Gonna connect. Penguins has slain Sark. Diana looking for the kill onto Vlad, but she's just gonna get bursted down by the power of the sun. The shutdown goes over to Ballsy Raccoon, but the death sense connects onto Leona. You don't take my ally for free, he says. A shutdown. Credit going over to Mordekaiser. It's a three for one. Red team makes the fight their own. This should be a mid tower. Blue team's trying to respond here with a bot tower. They do get one. So at least trading one tower for another, but this might be two if the blue team can't respond and get up to this next tower in time either way it's going to be huge advantages in map pressure for the blue team or sorry the red team rush going in there putting down some wards trying to clear things out zark though questionable a miscommunication there. in that most recent fight blue team wanted to pressure mid but their AD carry was busy pulling a double lift, just farming up bottom. And that's something that you got to be aware of. Even if you pick somebody off, if your guy's not there, you're still in a fair fight. And a fair fight is not what you want to do under an enemy turret. Well played by Red Team, realizing the opportunity to collapse, realizing Callista was bought. Thresh. Trying to come around the side there. Trying to get a flank. Get some vision down on their side of the map. It'll be interesting to see where the next move is. Vlad still farming it up there in the top lane. Still quite behind Mordekaiser though, both in terms of farm and in kills. He's actually more, he's further behind Mordekaiser than Darius is behind Yasuo. And that's saying something because Yasuo has been so dominant so far in the mid lane that you would think that that's going to be one of the biggest advantages in the game, but it's not. Mordekaiser doing a wonderful job of oppressing his lane opponent, keeping him down, and Vlad being forced to build very defensively. A champion that has no inbuilt CC other than the pool, which is your escape mechanism, he's not going to contribute to this fight very well just because his damage is so low. Yeah, they're going to definitely have to rely on Leona and on Jarvan to be able to engage on these fights. They really don't need Bozzy Raccoon to put down the CC. They just need him to come in at the right time once everybody's grouped up or a good Cataclysm lands where they he can put down the ultimate and do tons and tons of damage. The extra percent damage additional on to his ultimate's going to come out very strong for him. Here comes a roam, though, from Penguins. Penguins just gonna give him that little love tap with the Siphon of Destruction and walk away. This could be a potential push coming out from Red Side, but it's gonna be Yasuo and Kalista finding Thresh in their own jungle. The box being dropped as a defensive mechanism. Kalista wants to keep chasing this one. Thresh already looking like pins and needles. He's gonna be able to walk away from that one. The blue side wards away their Red Side opponents for the time being. We're gonna clear out some wards here. Zark playing up a little bit aggressively. Penguins trying to put down some damage. I think Vlad should be able to... Heal back up after that one, though. Oh, here comes the ulti! The ultimate comes out from Kalista, trying to get Leona in range, but the Zenith Blade point blank does not connect the lantern! It's Mordekaiser to safety. Ballsy Seagull has got to be face palming himself over that one as the blue team loses their tier 2 turret bottom to Diana. Red has to be careful to not overextend this fight. Yeah, you made Kalista waste the ult. Yeah, you were able to get away from Leona. That's probably tilting them a little bit, but you're still in a 4v5. Don't commit the same sin you punished five minutes ago. Mm. They got quite a good push there from Sir Longballs. He took down the bot lane tower while all of that mess was going on. Nothing actually going over to the blue team. We're going to see red team try to respond to this push, but they're going to be in a bad spot, out of position. Had Twitch not have Invis there, he would have been caught out. But here's the ulti. Solar player comes out and only connects on the Diana. It's going to be Kalista. Now in the middle of everyone, the exhaust has been dropped. But the health bar and the stress is dropping incredibly, incredibly low. Hemoplague has been dropped into a couple people, but it's not doing any damage on its own. Penguin finds the kill onto America Korean. Zark drops as well. Blue side has no answer for this. Thresh walks away with less HP than he could ever dream of. It's a three for zero. It's red team taking the win as blue side, their coordination is just not there. Oh, the dragon too. They're going to pick this one up. So not only winning the fight and control on the map, 
with those towers they picked up earlier, but gonna pick up their third dragon of the game. They're gonna have more movement speed for these fights. Something that's gonna help them out quite a bit with their immobile top and bot laners. We'll have to see where they're gonna go now. It looks like they might rush Baron here. They have the dragon. They're gonna walk over a ward though. Will blue team respond? It looks like they are now going to respond, but will they be able to burn this Baron out? The dragon's not a wonderful tool for actually DPSing the Baron, but it's great for trying to zone away the enemy if they look to stop it. And red team's burning this one down nice and quick. Red team has slain Baron Nasher. Not even 25 minutes into this game. The death oh, the hook. Onto Leona. The health bars are still high enough to potentially threaten a fight here, but the rest of red team wants to disengage this one. Twitch isn't there. Mordekaiser is going to throw that dragon under the bus. It won't live much longer anyway. Blue team's forced to just take that as a consolation prize, but the Baron buff here on this red team is going to spell out a very strong push. That is not good at all for the blue team right now. They have very limited options for fending off the red side. You can see the push now from everywhere. They have to get a good team fight. Problem is, everybody keeps getting caught. Leona's not able to peel away well enough or get a good ultimate. If they can get the good combo though with Jarvan and Leona, you should see a turn in these fights, but it just hasn't happened. Red team's had the great hooks and Tons and tons of ability to engage these fights just right where blue team can't even respond. Blue team's dependent on hitting that combo. They need a Callista or a Jarvan engage into the Yasuo last breath. They need to get a Hemo Plague down on multiple people. Red team has so many of these power 1v1 champs. They just need to go in and fight. Speaking of fights, it's going to be Callista being forced to save Leona. The CC connection from Thresh would have been certainly living up to the name of that ability and sentencing her to death. But blue team forced to play so defensively now because they can't connect this combo, because they can't make their team fight work, and red team is just walking all over them. 10,000 gold is the tune of their advantage. One thing to note, I think the last four fights, Callista has not had the ultimate. They've been able to burn it out just before these fights. Red team taking advantage of that cooldown. And because of that, Leona's not able to save, uh, get saved whenever she decides to dive in and try to CC some of these champions. The Solar Flare also getting burned out early as well. We'll have to see. It's not down at the moment, but the flash down for Leona as well as the ultimate could spell bad things for the blue team. A solid push coming out here from Red. They're going to leave three men bottom. Send these two top. Yasuo can't defend this on his own. It's going to be a pull. It's going to be a death rate. It's going to be a moon fall. And Diana cuts him down to size. Looking for more on to Jarvan. Zark is going to be the first casualty of this fight. As Mordekaiser with no fear in the world. Ping wins. Not even going to be close to being caught by that solar flare. The lantern brings him away safely. Yumu's ghost played his pop. Twitch wants Vladimir. He's going to have to let him go. But the red side will not stop this push. Diana and Darius double D continuing to push down this top lane. As as the bottom lane turret starts to melt away. Blue team turret is destroyed. Blue team base is broken. The inhibitors are the next target. Death Sentence is trying to connect. The flight is not there. The Cataclysm drops. But Vlad is not going to be able to do enough damage. Jarvan's already dead. Callista's dead. Penguins is unstoppable. The blue inhibitor has fallen. There's three down on this blue team side. Yasuo doing what he can't to play hero mode. But there are no heroes unless you're on the red side. Vladimir, the last man standing. Forced to pull away. He can't do it. It's Twitch and it's fresh and it's so much zone power. He can't get anywhere near these guys. And this is going to be the game. Looks like Red Team's going to pick it up. Huge gold lead. 12 to 24 right now in favor of Red Team. Looks like they may pick up another one just to make it 25. But that is going to be the game for the Red Team. Next GG's all around. Red Team takes it with a 15,000 gold advantage. 24 to 12, not even 30 minutes into this game. A stellar performance coming out from Team Red. GG to all 10 players.